Hello, this is Vance Whitaker. I'm the strawberry breeder here at the Gulf Coast Research and Education Center. And thank you for joining me as uh, we talk about the two most recent releases from our program. The first one I'll cover is Florida Medallion, which has been trialed as FL1630-128. This variety is known for its excellent fruit quality, as you can see. Florida Medallion has quite a complex pedigree. The closest variety to Medallion in the pedigree happens to be Winter Star, which is a great grandparent. And true to its pedigree, Medallion does have some unique characteristics compared to our other varieties. Florida Medallion has uh, excellent fruit quality, including very consistent conical shape, very even medium red color, and very good firmness. But the thing that I want to highlight is its outstanding flavor, which on all harvest states is either similar to or better than Sweet Sensation. The fruit size is very similar to Florida Brilliance. This graph shows data from our trained taste panels over two years. The sweetness data is shown for Brilliance in blue, Sensation in red, and for Medallion in green. And what you can see is that the green bar is always equal to or higher than the red bar, which is sensation on all the harvest states. In other words, medallion is either equal in sweetness to sensation or higher level of sweetness than sensation on all harvest states. Similarly, this graph shows sensory flavor. Okay, so the first one was sweetness and now this one is flavor. And you can see the same thing. Once again, the panelists rated Medallion as having the highest flavor or at least equal to sensation and flavor on all harvest dates. In terms of yield, Florida Medallion uh, is an early variety. Uh, it's yield up into the end of January, which is the top of the green section here, uh, is not too different from our standard varieties. However, in the late season, by late February, the yield is starting to lag behind our other two varieties. But interestingly, the yield of medallion and brilliance in this grower trial in 2019-20 were not really very different in February and March. But this made sense as the fertilizer program uh, was a higher rates in this grower trial than we used in our GCREC trial. And because medallion is a compact plant, we've learned that it needs higher fertilization rates in order to maximize its yield. Medallion has a very upright but compact plant, much more compact than Brilliance or, or Sensation. And as a result, in order to maximize yield, the plant needs to be pushed, if you will, uh, grown a little bit larger through higher fertilization, for example, or growing on heavier soils uh, compared to brilliance and sensation as a result. Now the disease resistance package of Florida Medallion is a little bit different from sensation and brilliance. It's a little bit more susceptible to anthracnose fruit rot, not much, and should not be a problem under a standard spray schedule. The one to watch out for is charcoal rot. It is more susceptible uh, to macrofermina phaseolina, which is the cause of charcoal rot, then sensation and brilliance. So you're going to want to watch out for that. It also tends to be a little bit more susceptible to mildew than brilliance, uh, but not too different from sensation. Here's how I would summarize the management recommendations so far for Florida Medallion. First, I suggest targeting planting dates earlier in the planting period from October 1st to 10th. Because of the compact plant, you can plant this variety fairly early without overgrowing the plant. Second, as I mentioned before, this variety needs more nitrogen fertilization and maybe more total fertilization for all nutrients than brilliance and sensation. Third, target this variety to fields with heavier or wetter soils. Again, because the plant needs to be pushed a little bit more, and that may be a little bit more difficult on really dry non-organic soils. Don't plant in fields with known macrofermina or charcoal rot infestations. And also watch out for powdery mildew as this one is moderately susceptible to mildew as well.
This variety produces fewer runners in the fruiting field, which is a great uh, advantage for fruit growers, but it also produces lower runners in the nursery field, which means that the stock bulk up has been a little bit slower for this variety than it was for previous varieties. Nevertheless, right now we have 171,000 non-certified mother plants uh, that FSGA is in the process of distributing for this summer's nursery production. We estimate that that'll result in 150 to 200 fruiting acres of this variety next season. In subsequent seasons, there's enough stock to produce substantially more. In summary, Florida Medallion is a variety with really great fruit quality and flavor that has a compact plant that has fewer runners in the fruiting field, but also is going to need to be managed a little bit differently than the other varieties. And I hope this video has given you a sense uh, of how to do that. The next variety is, as you can see, something a little bit different, a white strawberry, which is being marketed as a pine berry. And this variety is named Florida Pearl, which was trialed previously as Florida 1678. 109. Florida Pearl also has a fairly complex pedigree, even sharing one parent in common with Florida Medallion. The source of the white color was from seed we received from Japan around 2012. Sometimes people ask me, is the white color the result of genetic engineering? And the answer is no. It's a trait that's found in nature and perfected in a number of Japanese varieties. And we simply cross that trait into our Florida strawberry varieties. In the upcoming video, I'll show you a little bit more about the white berry and start talking a little bit about some management considerations. Hi, my name is Vance Whitaker. I'm the strawberry breeder here at the University of Florida. And today in this video, I'm gonna to introduce to you our new white strawberry release. It's been tested under the breeding selection number 1678109, and we recently applied for the trade name Florida Pearl. So in today's video, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about this variety and some tips that I have for managing it here in Florida. This strawberry is commonly called a pine berry. And the reason for that is that the aroma of the berry often reminds people of a slight pineapple essence, and therefore it's called a pine berry. Uh, the origin of this strawberry really came from genetics in Japan. We got some seed from Japan a number of years ago and crossed that into our Florida strawberries to combine the white color from the Japanese strawberry into the hardiness and the climate adaptation of a regular Florida strawberry. This strawberry yields about three quarters of the amount of a typical red strawberry variety. When fully ripe, this berry has a white base color on the outside. The seeds turn a nice red attractive color and the side of the fruit that's exposed to the sun has a slight pink blush. The inside of the fruit meanwhile is pure white. Some blemishes that would not be obvious on a red strawberry become more apparent on the white background of this particular berry. For instance, this blemish is caused by a leaf rubbing over the surface of the fruit as it's ripening. One of the really important things about the white strawberry is recognizing the proper stage of harvesting. When you look at these four berries, the one on the left is considered underripe. It has a green hue that is particularly obvious on the shoulder of the berry. The next one to the right is now at a great stage of ripeness. It doesn't have a green hue, but the akines are red and the surface is white. The next berry to the right is a little bit more ripe and has more of the pink hue, but still is at a per perfect har a harvest stage. Finally, the fourth berry on the far right is starting to show some yellowing of the surface color. And that's an obvious sign that this berry is overripe. Even a very small amount of yellow color on the surface, once the berry goes into cold storage, will deepen and become more unattractive over time. So it's very important not to harvest and pack any strawberries that have any yellow surface color whatsoever. Now, because there's such a narrow stage 
of ripeness that's ideal for this berry, it's going to be necessary to harvest this berry more often than you would a red strawberry. So let me share some recommended growing practices for this berry in Florida. Well, the pine berry, because it has a smaller fruit size than our typical red varieties, it's important not to plant this variety too early, which is a practice that tends to reduce fruit size early in the season. So I recommend an ideal planting date right around October 15th. Second, uh, this berry, because the surface blemishes are more apparent on the white background, it can be helpful to plant this berry in an area that's less exposed to wind. And third, uh, because this berry is a, a robust plant and it is fairly, uh, has fairly good disease resistance, it should be easy to grow. However, it is somewhat susceptible to Phytophthora root and crown rots like our other varieties. And therefore, we do recommend Ritamil uh, shortly after planting for this variety. In summary, three important points to remember are, number one, target planting the Florida Pearl pineberry variety right around October 15th. Second, try to plant in an area, if possible, that's less exposed to wind or other environmental factors that may cause more blemishes on the fruit. And finally, and most importantly, remember that this variety has an ideal ripeness window that is very small. It is very easy to pick berries that are either underripe or overripe. Therefore, Training pickers is going to be very important, as well as reducing the harvest interval. Finally, a big thanks to the University of Florida, to Florida Foundation Seed Producers, and to the Florida Strawberry Growers Association for helping us bring this variety to the market. And if you have any questions and would like to contact me, I'd be very happy to help you in the future. Just contact me at the email shown on the screen. As I mentioned in the video, the yield of our white strawberry, which is shown on the right in the bar graph, is about three quarters of the yield of our commercial standard varieties. It's also not quite as early as those varieties, but tends to catch up a little bit later in the season. In the table on the right, you can see that the fruit size of Florida Pearl is also lower than the fruit size of Brilliance and Sensation. Overall, this variety has pretty good disease resistance as well. It's a little bit more susceptible to anthracnose fruit rot than sensation and brilliance, but again, not a whole lot more and should not be at all a problem under a standard spray program. For all the other diseases listed down the table, uh, the, the susceptibilities or resistances are all moderate. There's nothing that really stands out. Uh, so really this variety is pretty easy to grow because it doesn't have very many strong susceptibilities to disease. As I mentioned on the video, target your planting dates to around October 15th. I wouldn't go before about October 10th. Fertilizer programs probably don't need to be very different from Brilliance or Sensation as this is a pretty robust and vigorous plant. Do pay attention uh, as far as disease a little bit to Phytophthora and Anthracnose, probably more than the other diseases. But most importantly, train your pickers very carefully to recognize that narrow optimum color range that indicates ripeness. Thankfully, Florida Pearl runners very well in the nursery, and so we have plenty of stock available for future seasons. Florida growers, please, by the end of February, so only a few weeks from now, please let the FSGA know how much of this variety you want to grow next season, uh, again, by the end of February. If you're a grower outside of the state of Florida, it may be difficult to get uh, a testing agreement from the FSGA, given that uh, Florida growers are, of course, the priority for the stock distribution, but you, of course, may make requests if you wish. Finally, I want to acknowledge our excellent lab members, my great collaborators, and excellent support organizations. Thank you all so much, and I hope this video has been helpful.